Thank you for listening to this Podcast One production. Now available on Spotify, PodcastOne.com, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Every season, the Olsons would gather on their dock. With all the weeds and muck, no one would go into the water, except for neighbor Larry, who would stand in there to cool off amongst the thick weeds. Hey, neighbors. Larry. But this season, the Olsons dropped a few aquaside pellets into their lakefront. After just one application, the water was crystal clear. And, turns out, neighbor Larry is a free spirit and a fan of skinny dipping. Hey, neighbors. Oh, my. Who nude? New. Clear your lake or pond completely. Visit Aquaside.com. State permit may be required. Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive wage and start as soon as seven days. No resume or experience required. Health and safety are a top priority with all of our roles and sites. Amazon is taking precautions in our buildings to keep people healthy. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. I remember your character as as you evolved, and when he came to the war to, to juice his end, you physically removed yourself from us, and and I admire you for it. I love you for it. I thought it was fucking great, but it was such a heartbreaking thing because you we spent more time together and and that seven anyone. years than yeah. anybody yeah. in my fucking life, including yeah. family. Don't you know? That the music should be solemn. This is Theo Rossi. This is Theory. As we proceed. Hello, everyone. Um, coming up, I have my, uh, my, my, my brother. One of my favorite people, um, that exists on this thing that's spinning us all around. Um, He's one of my favorite actors. He's uh, one of my favorite humans. And he's also potentially the most unique individual I've ever met in my life. I've never met someone even close to him. And, um, and I've spent a lot of time with him since, uh, since we started this whole journey together in, in, uh, 08, 09. My, uh, my brother, Tommy Flanagan, um, is just one of the greatest people you can have a conversation with. So I hope that uh, you all are about to drop into something that is just him and I doing our thing um, and uh, and just talking about everything. So without further ado, my my man, Tommy Chibs, Braveheart, Gladiator, every movie on the planet, Flanagan, the best. This has been a long time coming, and and uh, because of our, we usually get to see each other a lot more, but because of this whole, you know, the shelter in place and the lockdown, we would usually see each other on the road at these different, you know, uh, the different events and stuff, but, you know, obviously those are potentially a thing of the past. You know, this has been, I had, a uh, I had Coatsy on, uh, in the beginning and he's just such a mad fucker. <laughs> Never laughed so much as with him and you on that uh, set. I mean, the tears, I mean, I wrote about it, I tweeted or something the other day about the, the, the giggles on that. Yeah. Show. And it was fucking, you, you could have beat it. Some that of the one... liners you came out with it used to destroy <laughs> me. You and Emilio, man. I mean, the band of you two. Was and killer. Dayton. And Dayton. Yeah, you know, he was, but he, gave, he always gave as good as he got. Though. He did. and he, But he was also really ripe for punishment because he just brought it upon himself. I was like in the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what was funny is we were talking about that on that show was that if we didn't have that, if we didn't have that, we'd be we'd be finished, right? Yeah, because we because us three, you know, um, would literally go sit in each other's rooms, yeah. and and while it was getting more and more chaotic, we would just kind of like just go in there, laugh, and then just walk out and be like cool. And if we didn't have each other, no, we, we, it wouldn't. Have, it, there's you would have walked, coach would have walked, we would have walked, hundred percent, because everyone at a certain point, someone needed someone. And it was so great true. that you could just reach out and go, Tate, 
<laughs> do your butt and then all right, all right, have a laugh and goodbye to her. It's so true. And 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 the thing that now, after being years removed, I've been trying to come to like more with like inner peace and all the stuff that you and I have always, you know, as as chaotic as never we had, are, yeah. never had, you know. And I'm and and I think kids. I mean, you think about. I mean, sorry to interrupt you, but you think about when we first started that show. Oh my god! We butt bounced through season one. Oh my god! And then you then you 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 got your shit together and it inspired me. You're such an inspirational kid, Theo. You really are, man. I got to give you that. You, you've inspired me for years, and I, I respect the fuck out you, son. Can we say fuck on your show? Yeah, you could say fuck. You could say every fucking thing you want. <laughs> fucking cunty bollocks and fucking good, huh? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Here's what's funny. So I come on. I'm the kid who, I, literally a kid who just done a bunch of these TV shows and never really done many movies. And I freaked the fuck out when I saw you because of two reasons. Two reasons. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, as much as it was Gladiator and Braveheart and all that, it was the cat and the fiddle, the bar. I used to go there, and you always had the fucking uh, the the big cowboy hat on. You'd be holding court, right? And uh, sad bastard. <laughs> and I was like, but again, I don't know. You always dressed crazy, and you always had this larger than life personality. And then you come on, and I'm watching everyone. And we didn't know you knew everyone. You were friends with everyone when you went on, right? You were friends with most of the people who were part of the show. I was like a guest. Yeah, well, yeah, it was a but there's a little there's some there, yeah. You knew you knew you know, you knew Charlie a little. You I, knew I, I, yeah, me and Charlie had almost done a thing together. And uh, so I knew him for a few years before that. Uh I knew John Linton, obviously. Yep, yep. You knew Boone. You knew Boone. Booney, a I, I knew Booney. I, Booney was the first guy I met when I came to California. And you and Booney were in the game together. Yeah, guys- we don't on the game together. We've uh, we've done a couple of things together, but uh, I mean, I love Booney. I mean, He's when, the best. when we first met each other, fucking hated each other. Hate, well, he, he, he hated yeah. me. <laughs> he hated you. He hated me, and it took years. It took Sons of Anarchy before we became real lifelong friends it was so not and here's what's funny about that because we literally dove right into this here's what's funny about that i've never met in my life anyone that's hated you i've met people that hated me Booty. i mean well well not counting dina i've met <laughs> no i've never met anyone like everybody has always said and i feel like you and i have had that same thing where people are like Oh, they're fucking crazy, but I love them, right? It was always like that thing of like, oh, man, this, this but Boone, Boone could hate anyone. It's just. But Boone, Boone looks in the mirror every day and just goes, <laughs> fuck you. I hate you. So then when we got there, so we got there and it was so crazy because we had done multiple shows, but, you know, we did the first show, the, the pilot with Scott Glenn and them, which was like a totally different show, right? Totally different. And then we came and did the other one. And then obviously, it's. It, I said this to Kim. It feels like it's either yesterday or ten thousand years ago. I, like in in one way or another, some days I feel like it was ten minutes ago, and some days I feel like it was ten thousand years ago. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know exactly what you mean by that. Because I mean, I'm sitting in this room right now in my office. I've not been up here in literally. I've not been up here in months. Wow. And um, there's just bits of you guys everywhere. There's Epstein over there. There's Perlman over there. You're over there. I'm not going to yeah. start spinning around because that's just stupid. <laughs> but I mean, there's just sons of anarchy shit all over this fucking place. Same thing here. Look, fucking headshots over there. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what's, here's what's so crazy. Now that I've removed myself from the event, which was that world that has identified us and consumed, you know, it's, it's identified oh, yeah, yeah. us. It, it definitely put us in, uh, in a else. totally different place. I wouldn't have... My kids, I wouldn't be sober. I wouldn't like be like trying to be a better person. I wouldn't be any of that if it wasn't for that show. So for all the things that drove me crazy, you wouldn't. You you bought that house when we were doing it, right? Yeah. You 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 moved out to like a what ranch. What the big gray hair, son? What the big gray hair? <laughs> all the gray hair. I've I lost my hair. I mean, I met my wife through it. I had my kid. Like everything that has came from it. Is my existence now? My, it's my whole reason for living right now. Isn't that crazy? It all came from that show, Dina. I met 
Do you yeah. know that show? I remember. We had our daughter, Anjanu, and, yeah. uh, you know, we have this poem we have now, and we have horses and shit, and, uh, and it all came from that show. And you have to work your ass off to keep that. Yeah. But but just to get, and my sobriety. Yeah. That at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I've had my stumbles and stuff. But Me having too. that sobriety is the most, and, and my daughter and my wife, it's the most spectacular. That's, that, that's life there. There's nothing else. Everything else you do, like doing jobs that you have to do to go out there and yep. earn, to make some money it may not be your your favorite script you might not be your best thing you want to do you might not be playing the character you want to play or being the best you can be yeah. but like you were saying earlier is in this day and age you got to make a fucking living you know what i mean but that but that was like house, I, but every project though i don't give a fuck what it is i give it and I know you do. Right. You give it your heart and your soul because that's who you are. Because that is the character that you're building for yourself. To show people, it doesn't matter what the fuck you're working on, you're man enough to go and do it to feed your family and get it done and do it to the best of your abilities. And it's just character building. Well, here's, here's what's so crazy about you and I. You and I were not actors before we started acting so we were we like we weren't actors a couple of hoods we, yeah we were the first well maybe we were acting in our other lives right and what we were my whole you know life I mean? was a fucking performance you know exactly. what it's like you grew up yeah, the same yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. Accents. yeah yeah but you know the whole the whole life was a performance you had 100%. to be a certain we were certain, we were certain team hard to be, a, had to be a what we were hiding what we were guy, doing guy. yeah, yeah get, getting to, getting messed up messing with your friends doing this like chess club when I was 12 I used to pretend I was going to do soccer practice to get away from my buddies to go to chess club because if you play chess when I grew up yeah you know, you know, you're, you're, exactly you're in trouble yeah that would yeah, but weak, right? And and the same with me. When I used to draw and stuff, I would go leave my friends who were all beating each other up and playing football and doing whatever. And I'd go, oh, I, my mom's calling me home early. And I would just go sit and draw. And I would never tell anybody I was an artist. I didn't want anybody to know, know that I draw. Was. Yeah, that's all I did. All I did was sit there and draw all these different comic book characters and all this kind of stuff. But the point of that is, is you are, and, and I say this because you and I have done some heavy fucking duty acting together. You are are easily easily and i know you hear it all the time so i don't fucking care if anybody whatever you're easily one of the best actors i've ever met in my life ever and for the reason being is the eyes never lie you are the most fucking believable because you believe it when you're saying it right yeah. because you're creating this from life experience and what do we say the best actors have to live the biggest lives like if you live a life you're going to be able to act it what i felt in that show, like you just said, I've done so many, you know, jobs since, and especially, you know, with kids and a wife and a family, we have to do things that maybe we don't want to do with that. We were like, we were growing up while we were doing it. We were, the whole world had shifted for us in every way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was all the inner turmoil of the show. <laughs> but we were there was so much in the turmoil, but we were getting but we were getting closer and closer and closer, all of us. So the more the outside world got crazier, we would get closer and closer and closer. Yeah. But I I, 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 I remember your character as as you evolved and when he came to the war to, to Juice's end, you physically removed yourself from us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I knew it was all the it's all working up here. Like I, I, I saw you do it, and that was heartbreaking to me. Yeah, because you knew where you, were, where you were going, your character was going, and it was it was breaking my heart because I was losing you physically and losing you in the show. And so there was two fucking things going on. It was it was weird as fuck, man. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Understood why you were doing it. I, I got the whole to. process of it. And, and I admire you for it. I love you for it. I thought it was fucking great. But it was such a heartbreaking thing because you, you knew it was coming to an end and all those times. I mean, we spent more time together in, in that than seven anyone. years than, than anybody anyone. in yeah. my fucking life, including yeah. family. Yeah, me too. So apart from this new pandemic, but we'll get, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. But, now, um, now we're all together. Yeah. But, you know, I mean. Um, What's funny is you don't remember this, but. As I was I removing, no, no, no. There were certain times I know you don't remember, no, <laughs> but there were a lot of times that you were, that you do remember. Cause when me and you were doing some heavy shit, 
We were in it. We were coming in like fucking two bulls, right? When we did this stuff where, uh, oh yeah, where I where I went to hang myself, or even when you go back, like one of our first scenes was when you were with your daughter and wife when we were in the uh, an island. Yeah, the island season. I I was playing cards with the daughter. Yeah, <laughs> but there was a scene towards the end where I was I went to go to the Mayans, whatever, for help, and you and everybody comes in, and the sons were called or whatever. And everyone wasn't speaking to me. No one was. And we, I wasn't speaking to anyone in real life. And you weren't, we weren't speaking. It was like you just said. We had all pulled away. And you literally came up to me. And we didn't even say much. But you like hugged me. And you was, we were so it – was it was almost something like the character would do. But that you did. And you were so different. Everybody else was playing angry. And you were playing sad and heartbroken. And I was like, holy shit, this is why, this is what makes actors great. When they don't look at what it's saying to do, but what they do, what they believe the character would do. And I was, it blew me away because I was, it, it made me better. It made everything better about the scene and the show. And, and that's the crossover as well, you know, from, from the, the real friendship and the characters and there's that, so that all got intertwined, you know. And so, when you walk into that room, you if outside this office set, it's you and me having a laugh, talking away, blah blah blah. As soon as you're in that room, it's a different thing. But like you're saying, but at that point, we weren't even talking really because you mm. were so distant, understandably, and you were being distant because you would get in your head and you knew you were breaking away. But so yeah. you know, I just felt it was just. I don't know. It's just yeah. I was I was on I was on like a different TV show at one point. You know, I was with other people. I was never with you guys, and right. and I was like, it was I didn't work when you guys worked. It was like a totally different thing. And then, obviously, towards the end. But what was funny is, and 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 Tig and I were talking about this was the hangover from it. Like when it was ending, we wanted it to end. We were like, okay, like let's. Yeah. And then I think we kind of it's almost like being in a relationship and then seeing what the rest of the world looks like. Like we came out of it and we were like, Oh, wait a second. It's not like this. Like it's not this family thing all the time. And it's not like yeah. people who love each other. And Oh my God, this was like a once in a lifetime thing. Cause I went right on to another show. You went right on to woo assassins and now Westworld and all these other shows. And it's not taking anything away from them. It was just this, special moment in time which i'm sure like with braveheart you're never going to make a movie like when you did braveheart for the first time right like that's glad he came close glad no 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 but i'm saying like the experience the experience that i mean i was like a six month shoot as well and everyone was like family uh, right? family uh, so and that was my and that was my introduction to the movie world so that was my first time on a set front of big cameras mel gibson and family. I didn't, I didn't know shit. I didn't know a fucking thing. I didn't know a goddamn thing. I mean, it's, can you hit your mark? Walk 10 paces high, and, and I couldn't stop looking down, doing all that. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, we experience. You just count your steps and the way back. But no, I just kept looking down. And then he said the words, crucial mark. That just killed me. Crucial, crucial. Oh, man. I don't think, I don't know how they got it. 25 takes later, Mel sat me down for lunch, right? Yeah, let me tell you a couple of things. Anyway, that was, uh, yeah, that was a six month shoot, and uh, I learned a few tricks on that show. How did, and, and, and that was your first time truly acting? Truly acting, yeah. I did theatre before that. I did yeah. like three years on stage. I did a couple of wee TV appearances, but that was my first, like, you know, what the, f I mean, what a. I mean, what, what an a, introduction. What, what an introduction. <laughs> yeah, I could go and smash 10 of those English guys with an axe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like Easter House when I grew up. I do that. And everyone was young in that. Like, everybody was kind of like... 1994, about, buddy. Yeah, everybody was about to kind of take off after that, right? Brendan Gleeson, I had, you know, there was like just... And, and and so now you come from that and you're like, oh, this is what it's going to be like all the time. Yeah, yeah, no. Then, then, then you kind of... It's like the whole year before it comes out, no one knows who the fuck you are. No, Not yeah. a sausage. And then all of a sudden, Braveheart comes out, and then it's like they start yeah. pointing at you. But then, but then I was because this was all so fresh, the scar on my face, and Braveheart just come out. And then I'd be sitting in a bar in Glasgow, and some fucker would be staring at me, and I'd be like, what "Are you fucking looking up?" <laughs> <laughs> I 
love that. So I saw you brave heart. I'm like, oh, 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 okay. So then it got confusing for a yeah. couple of years after. I mean, people were eyeballing me because I had yeah. a scar, yeah. because I was still in that street mentality yeah. at the time, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I, I, used to, I used to drive me nuts because then I'd be confused. It just hurt me because I've got, I don't and it was always this kind of almost confrontation after it. Bizarre, 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 bizarre. I had, I had one, I had one when I, because we just moved to Austin, like whatever, a little less than two years ago. But when I went back to New York to do Luke Cage, I had moved back to New York and I had moved back to where I'd grown up, which was an incredibly hostile environment at all times, right? In Staten Island. So I went for a run one day and some guy was driving really fast, like everybody does. And he almost hit me. And I went nuts, right? I lost it. I saw red. I went nuts. And I was like, roll down the fucking window. Roll down the window. And as he rolls down the window, he's looking at me. And I was like, what? What are you doing? You're going to kill me? Whatever. And he goes, oh, man, I'm such a big fan. And I was like, ah, you fucker. You can't even yell. You can't even yell. You can't even yell at anyone anymore. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> And I like to yell. I like a good scream and shout. One time we were driving back from set one night and it used to be me, Boone and Charlie. And we'd all ride along the yeah. one towards Hollywood. Yeah. And this guy, it was like bumper to bumper um, just before you get to Highland. It was bumper to bumper and this guy just missed Booney. And I stopped my bike right in front of the I stopped all the traffic, put my bike right in front of his car and I'm standing there, you motherfucking stupid mother. I'm just going crazy. And I realized I've got the full black, full face helmet on. Yes, with the visor. <laughs> so he's just seen arms. He's just seen arms. The guy's looking at me going, wow, wow, I can't hear you. Wait, you can't you hear him. <laughs> <laughs> you look like one of those things at the car wash. Oh, one of those, yeah, the one car wash guy. So, but you, but you're, you're back on the bike now. You were off the bike for a while. Yeah, well, it was Gardens of the Galaxy. I was shooting that and I had like a couple of weeks off and I nipped home. And I thought, I'll take a quick fly up the PCH. And some idiot was texting and pushed me off onto the side of the road. And, uh, you know, it was all sand. I hit my brakes, snapped my clavicle. I sent you the video, remember? Yeah, yeah. Nice. What other things? What other? Like, Why would you send that? You snapped your clavicle. Got a metal plate put in here. And then, you know, my wife and daughter's like, come on, enough. You can't keep doing this. But then I just got one of those. Uh, the enduro bikes, the big 1250 BMWs, and I, I, just to go off into the wilderness on this this thing, it's it's good for the soul and good for the mind, you know. I, I love it, Theo. Well, you got you you seem to do that when we were doing the show, and kind of like towards the tail end, you started getting more in touch with nature, and you know something we touched on, which I definitely want to get into a little, is I think like like. Like me, we've always been terrorized by something. We don't know what it is, right? There's something that is kind of terror. Yeah. Something's terrorized us and it's made us exactly who we are. So I'm grateful for it. But at the same time, it was a bit of a monster to, to battle every single day of my and life. And it's still there. Always time. It It'll never go, go away. away. It'll never go away. I mean, I mean, my wife were talking the other day there and I don't talk about it because neither do you because you lived it. Mm-hmm. You survived it. Not, and you can remember funny times. Yeah, but the brutality and some of the violence that I witnessed firsthand, uh, the right in front of my eyes, and violence done to me. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it, 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 it doesn't just disappear. No. It's always there. And when you say it to people, when you talk about it, it seems so normal to you. Yeah, but, that's but to everyone else, yeah. they, they they don't understand what you're saying. I was telling a story recently. We used to hang out down by the beach in Staten Island all the time. We used to hang out and everybody would go there. It'd be hundreds and hundreds of people and everybody would be drinking and fighting. And this one kid, I'll never forget that we were all hanging out with. He got in a fight. Somebody threw him a bat. He didn't realize the bat had a nail in it. Hit somebody. Person died. Right? And, and, and it was just, we're 15 years old. It just seemed like this was what was going on. Who would die in a DUI? Who would die with this? Who would die with that? And then, and then you assume that everyone in the world has lived a similar experience and, and they haven't at all. And so with all this terror, the one thing I wanted to get to before we go to that was you kind of started going more into nature. You bought the place you're in now. Yeah. You have the animals. It, that kind of happened when Anjanu came along, your daughter, right? That's right. I wanted to get her all the stuff that I dreamt of as a kid, you know, because I had a, it was bizarre the way where I lived was set up. If you walk through the front of my building, 
we walked out the front rather you were in the slums it was chaos it was debris there was poverty there was violence there was bigotry there was just just nasty yeah. you walk at the back of my building this this housing project was right on the outskirts of glasgow you had the hills and the, the wilderness and the trees and the forests and all the bullshit and i used to walk for miles i that was how that was how i survived that i would go out the back way and walk into the hills and just see all this nature and a little job working on a farm when I was a kid. And I always thought, you know what, if I ever have kids, then this is the way they should live. And and th- so this is all about my daughter. And then last night, this fucking coyote's got her poodle. Oh, God. What happened to the poodle? Ah, oh, it's intensive care right now. Intensive care. I swear to God, those vets, man, those... Uh, would you call them? emergency service weekend vets? Yeah. They just see you coming. It's we kind of cars you driving. All right, okay, that's that. I'll be blah blah blah. I'll be eight thousand dollars. <laughs> it's not that. It's not a human. But now they say they say because of what's going down and all the restaurants being closed and all the whatever that that coyotes, rats, squirrels, like they're being more aggressive. They're all out, right? And they're all out. So do you see them all over? That's that's the thing that kind of pisses me off as well. There's a million rabbits and squirrels all over the place. There's coyotes crawling, creeping through all the time. And, I mean, there's tons of rabbits. Get, grab a fucking rabbit. Don't grab my daughter's poodle, you <laughs> bastards. How many dogs do you have now? Five okay. dogs, five horses, a donkey, a cat, and a parrot. <laughs> Flying is up. <laughs> they coming two by two. Flanagan's Ark. And and who Ark. Uh, and you see them all every day? You're out there, you're like hanging out with them? Oh, absolutely so. And do you ride the horses around like in Yeah, and, and winter time it's just getting to that it's getting that hot way now, so they'll be stabled up. Not stabled up, but they won't be ridden so much because you can't you this heat just kills them, so and when we just went through the huge fires, uh, not we, I don't live there anymore, but when you guys went through it, your house was somehow like surrounded by fire, but didn't... I, I'm looking at a window there. There's a, a, a Frank Lloyd Wright house right in front of me. It was beautiful. It's called the Eagle's View, it was called. It's a historical landmark. Beautiful house, burned to the ground. Property away over that. Everywhere around me burned. And it burned. I'm not exaggerating. I swear my daughter, it burned a foot away from the house. All the trees, everything around the house, all the land, all burned. And their house is a big wooden box. And I have no idea how this thing is still standing. I mean, it was like miraculous. But isn't that like a metaphor for your life? Like, hasn't a bunch of things happened to you? Because you used to tell me you're like, Man, I don't... I, you I think don't. That all these things haven't hit me up, but bullets. Every, it's unbelievable. The, the, yeah. You've had a bunch of those things occur to you that yet you like times where it probably should have gone the bad way, like the wrong way, and it doesn't. <laughs> what is that? My whole <laughs> life is that. It's like, all right, I just get it was just a terrific car crash. I just died. I just this. I just that. Then, oh, <laughs> here's your silver lining, son. Boom. Because you haven't you haven't you been like legally dead or something? Didn't like something happen to you a few Three times? times? Yeah. Three, Three times. times. <laughs> So do you ever? So there obviously is a bigger purpose here, right? There's a bigger purpose. I, I'm not a religious man, but I mean, but I've definitely, I'm definitely I'm spiritual, whatever. I, 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 there's something I don't know what it is, but, I, I'm, but I'm definitely not a religious man. But I mean, I'm a blessed man, no doubt about it. I mean, for fu- I mean, I always think about angels working overtime, and if the guys or the gals who are looking after me. Mm-hmm. They must be fucking exhausted. They must be sitting up there smoking fags at their office desk. But that's just like, what's the motherfucker done now? Oh, that piece of <laughs> shit. Their wings are all burnt. You get holes in them. They're all drunk as fuck. Oh, what's he fucking done? But isn't that funny? We were both raised in heavy Catholic, you know, kind of heavy but Catholic. My mom. Thing. We we, we, sectarian, we the sectarianism because it's all Irish immigrants like Flanagan, of course. Yeah. So it's all Catholics and Protestants in the shipyards. The Catholics weren't allowed to work in the shipyards. So it's all this Protestant Catholic thing. So you know, you could be from the right gang area, but the, the but if you were the wrong religion, they would kick the shit out of you, like it happened to me. Are you if you drummy your toy to gang areas? Yeah. Amongst many. I said drummy, they said okay. Yeah, a Catholic or a Protestant, I said Catholic, bing ding, boom, boom, bam, kick the shit out of me. Just over religion. Just, yeah, it's just an excuse for yeah, it's just some excuse for violence. Violence, just violence, violence, violence. But doesn't it seem that people who are grow up in households that are so heavy on it kind of don't 
not you could say believe in it like for me i'm spiritual right i'm i'm face i'm i'm doing i believe in a higher power i'm i'm chasing samadhi which is inner peace all this kind of stuff but it's like when you when you look at like my mom will go to anything that's wrong if something's wrong if i'm like oh my arms killing me my mother would be like pray on it i'm like no i'm just maybe i could put bengay on it i'm like i don't need to pray on it but everything is you have to pray Oh, just ask, ask God. He'll tell you. I'm like, no, I'm just saying, I don't know what food. Yeah, is. yeah exactly. Yeah. My mom's exactly the same. It's that, that's the answer. Like for everything. Every Sunday, this is my mom every Sunday, but we grew up in Eastern house. It was, it was some Catholics in our street, but mostly Protestant. Every Sunday, my mom would send us to mass. And as we walked out the close onto the street to walk up past all the neighbors, all these tenements, they're all staring at you because you've got your Sunday best on, which was not. <laughs> it's not that best right with the hair all slicked down oh, off we go and my mom would hang out the window hold your heads up high children hold your heads up high <laughs> and enjoy mass and say a prayer and you're like oh fuck <laughs> yeah that was that was her life and that's everybody was like that there right? everyone like, that- like if I brought a girl to my mom for instance and she'd say what school did you go to darling and if she didn't say saint it wasn't a saint in front of her like saint leonard's or saint augustine's or saint she knew she was a person. She'd be like, yeah. Forget you know. it. It's over. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, it's, it's over. Sorry. I walked in before we left New York. I walked in. I had my, uh, my first son, Kane, was downstairs. And we hadn't, we hadn't baptized him or anything like that. We hadn't done anything like that. And, uh, well done, you. Well done, both you guys. Well, no. Well, well I came down and uh, my mom is sitting over him, you know, saying prayers and throwing water on him. And I said, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm baptizing him. And I said, um, first of all, I don't think you're qualified. That's number one. <laughs> Second, she goes, well, I'm doing it in the meantime for God. And I said, okay, just do it. Do what you got to do. Yeah, he's soaking wet now. So somebody take him upstairs. <laughs> but for us, like what I think, and you did it before me, so much change for us once we had kids, right? Like so much. And I, I never thought... I didn't have kids till I was late, bro. Late in my life, right? I was, I was 46. Yeah, I was 30, 39 before I had my first one, right? So I never thought, like I wanted them, of course. I just, I, I just never thought that would be a good idea, I basically was. I just didn't know if it would work out. And then obviously now everything's changed so dramatically that that's the reason for everything, right? Like I'm, yeah, that's, that's what... I mean, you think of it the life before. My life was basically a bag, mm-hmm. a hotel room, yep. different country. I mean, it was great. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, now I would, wouldn't fucking give you the time of day for it. But back then, that was my life. It was just bouncing around and not giving a shit and having fun and da 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 da, da. But now it was, then, It's a different mindset. It's a different switch. Like, I didn't like, know who that guy was. I don't know who I was back then. To, to waste all those years doing whatever I did. Is, not waste, but... The life I have now is is real life. You know what I mean? I lived in such a bubble for so long. You know, I think probably twenty years I lived in a bubble. Me too. You know what I mean? But if you didn't, but if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be you. So it's like now, now I've learned to accept it. Where I used to get mad and go, "Man, if I just started earlier, if I just did this, if I wasn't, if I wasn't blacked out or this or that, if I wasn't, you know, so crazy, you know, then this and this." But then I go, "Wait a second, if I wasn't the yin, I wouldn't know the yang. I wouldn't know the other side of it." Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, I would not recommend anyone take this journey. No, obviously, no, you know no, what I mean. No, I mean, no. but um. Because no one likes a fucking drunk, let's face it. No matter how cute or how funny you might think you are, I know I thought it was cute and funny, but basically it's a pain in the arse. If I'm around drunk people now, it's like... Oh, it's the nah, worst. Just, I can't be doing with you. Go away. It's the Seen worst. I've heard it all before, all the sort of self-loathing, the self-pity and the bullshit that goes with you. Just, oh, fuck off. But I, I think it. I think it's because I also didn't have other things in my life. Like, I remember what would happen was... I'd be with all my boys. We'd all be like, you know, we'd just gotten out to LA and I was doing all these little jobs and hustling when I had to, to make money and doing whatever. And if somebody was like, Oh, I didn't have an audition the next day. Or if I didn't have just, just an audition, I would go, Oh great. I'm going to go to happy hour. I'm going to go out. I'm going to party, you know, because I don't have anything tomorrow. It wasn't like, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to write or, Hey, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to try to like learn something on this. It was my mentality growing up was just, 
go 100 miles an hour. Yeah, there was no gray area. It's just it's no gray area. Ball, it's black and white. I was and, the same. And now I think that for us and why I'm, I think that you started that kind of trend, like you were, you were the first person that I saw even remotely close to me who I knew who had a kid, you know, meaning like the way, the way we were, our mindsets or whatever. And then we were all kind of going through it together. Right. I remember Anjanu at the first comic con we were at when she came and she was a baby and, and, Oh, it was amazing. And, and, you know, and Boone was running around with her and, 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 uh, she was kind of like the first, Baby on set yeah, for us. Was baby. Well, it was, it was Christy had her little baby, but I you know she's some of the crew and stuff. But, but yeah, she yeah. was amongst the actors. Yeah, but amongst the actors, and then and now here we are removed. Now you're doing Westworld, which is fucking awesome, right? I, I haven't the, watched it yet. Oh yeah, you're fucking great in it. Yeah, I went great. to the premiere, and uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it later on. You won't watch it. I found the best way to to, to do my to do our job is not watch yourself. Then you don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I know you kind of have to sometimes, but I, I really find it difficult to watch myself. And I really, I'm not being a, I'm not saying that in any kind of, I, don't, I just can't. It takes me um, a I, I, I couldn't at all for a long time. I would actually re- go out of my way to reject it. And now what I've learned to do was that I've separated myself completely. And what I try to do is I have to watch, if I'm going to watch something, I usually have to watch it multiple times because the first time is going to come from the ego eyes where I'm like, why do I look like that? Why is it? I'm not even looking at the story. I'm just looking at how I stand, how I, how I look, how this, yeah, yeah. And then on the next watch, I might go, oh, okay. That was, that was okay. Or then I start to get mad and I go, why would they use that take? I know I did something different. Why wouldn't they use this? And then what happens is ultimately there's no benefit unless you're going to use it as a way to get better, but you can't get better because every role is completely different. So it's not like you can look at something you did and say, I want to do this on the next one because the next one might be completely different. And for, and for us, especially for you, we're fortunate where things we play are so (laughs) incredibly different that they don't, they're never really the same, right? So it's not like you're playing like this leading man who's a lawyer with the family and, oh, you know, the George Clooney type. That that doesn't, <laughs> no. it just doesn't happen for us. And, no. but yet at the same time with the stuff we do, I always remember you telling me the story. I think it was, uh, what was the film where you were in the elevator and oh, you shot? Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. Uh, smoking Aces too. And they gave me the it was a, it was a it was a copper or brass elevator. This old the eighteen hundreds fucking beautiful elevator, but it's lead and bronze and you know it's metal box. Yeah. And they gave me these two big Desert Eagle handguns, and she told me it's it's full caps in here. And why did we put full caps in the first place? Is beyond me. He wants to hear it, and it, which is bullshit because it directly was a tip. I'm just going to say it. He was a tip. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I, I was a tit as well because I get in this elevator with these two massive desert eagles fully loaded and then someone owns the doors and I just started blasting Jesus Christ I was like months before I could hear anything again yeah you blew out your eardrums blew my eardrums off but Pete Trickle was a fucking fluid coming out of my ears and shit like what is that <laughs> so you probably don't remember it was I gotta guess it was season Let's see if my memory's right. I'll probably get corrected. Season four, it was the first episode of season. We were outside at Telemoro and we were shooting at targets. It was all of us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah no, yeah. no. Maybe it was early. Johnny it was Lewis. like, yeah, Johnny Lewis was exactly. Yeah. See, oh, so it was early. And season one, maybe two. And if you remember, our friend, back to Tiggy, used to get really upset if you shot guns near him. Because he would miss the safety. He was super safety on. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so, so we had all the blanks. You know, we had the blank rounds and, and we're shooting the AKs or whatever we had. And, we're, and the, the club is like trying out. And then because you and I would kind of, which by the way, we were probably the only two that ever slightly improv. Like we, we just, that wasn't something you, you did. Up with that. Yeah. So we just, you weren't, it just wasn't a show you can improv. But while I was walking away, I thought, oh, it'd be fun if I shoot this gun in the air. Oh. And Tiggy was right behind me. 
and he went nuts on me. That's the only time he's ever really yelled at me. Really? He made me, yeah, wow. he made me, he made me feel so bad because he said that his eardrums, and then you know the story. We were all there when Kenny hit him in the throat. <laughs> Fucking death grip. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? When he hit him in the throat. Koza. Koza. He's the sweetest man in the world. But he's 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 like the bionic man. He's like he's got superhuman strength. I don't know. It's- he used to be the second second in the world in arm wrestling. He was like the second in the he was I thought he was number one. No, I think he was number two. And I, I could be wrong, but he the story that we're talking about is they him and Tig had a fight in the clubhouse. Right. And I guess Tig got hit in the throat. <laughs> you can You can You can't hear me. I can't speak right. And we're not supposed to be laughing. That's serious stuff. And I just couldn't help oh, myself. No, 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 no. We, we had a few chuckles. I guarantee we had a few heavy laughs on that one. And, that, and, and you know what? The, we probably did laugh at, at wrong times. Like, you know, obviously if Perlman was ever on a motorcycle or the, <laughs> things that probably shouldn't have, people shouldn't laugh at. But the thing is, is, you know, that's where it goes down to how I think that family atmosphere that we utterly created was good times and bad, you know, going after work, you know, going on the bikes. And when we're not shooting, we'd be down in Malibu. We go do all those rides together. And and now to see it and look back on it like you what's so crazy to me and we have never talked about it. You went back and played chips again on that show, The Mayans. (laughs) I asked for a ridiculous amount of money, and they said yes. And I was like, "What was that like doing it?" It was. Uh, I keep reading about back in the cut and all that shit, but um, I don't know what it wasn't our show. So I mean, I, and I, I, I didn't much time. To, first off, I didn't have any time to prep for it. I was literally Friday, Friday to come in and be shot at the Monday. And I was on the road traveling. So I'd like a Sunday evening to prepare for that kind of thing. And I thought I would just breeze in there, I'd be okay. But it wasn't our show, it was someone else's show. And mm. but you know, I I I was all right. I enjoyed it. Was there any was there any I don't know anything about the show. I I've I've seen um no, I've I I've, I've seen two episodes. I saw um the first one, because I wanted to see Gemma and kind of what it was about. And then I've seen the one with uh, when Chucky came back because I wanted to see that. And it's it's not a knock on the show by no means. I just, again, with kids in life, I just haven't sat down and, and watched the show. We barely watched the show itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? You would maybe catch the odd one because you, you had to, finally had something to do. Yeah. You know, you had a wee moment you're looking forward to. But gee, I, I, I'm kind of oblivious to the show. I, I know we, we, we people ask me, we do those Q&As, for instance. People ask those questions. I had never had a clue what happened in season this and season that. I don't fucking know. They all It's 93 episodes or whatever. So they all kind of blend together. And I think that also there was so much going on in our lives during the show, on the show, on the set of the show, on the everything. So there's so many things that that it's almost hard to keep it all in there. But when you... The between when, take stuff is what I remember. That's what I remember too. That's I remember. all I remember. The actual... The filming and whatever, I, I kill some memories, but most of my memories are after cut or before cut. When you did, when you did the mines, was there like sons people on it, like crew members and stuff? No, there was a couple. Oh. There was a couple. A um, few people here and there. Scripty was there. Genius Scripty was there. Uh, Tracy was there. Makeup. Um, a couple of people, but not really. I was expect because I, I was kind of disappointed because I walked on the set and I was expecting to see the usual crew. Because you know they normally carry yeah, these crews through. I love those guys. The Joe and Bobby and all those guys, the grips and, and nobody. He ain't, he ain't right. Who is the guy? He ain't right. He ain't right. He was there. No, no. Security. He ain't right. We had a security guard who would greet us. He ain't I right. I can't remember his name and I feel so bad that I don't, but I would come in at 4.30 in the morning and that's all he used to say. Be like, that boy ain't right. He ain't right. He ain't right. And what's funny is- We used it in the show. You used it in the show. I used it for you. That boy ain't right. And it made it into an entertainment weekly article. The headline of the article was that boy ain't right. The boy ain't and, right. And, that and, you, 
and that was an improv. You squeezed an improv in, <laughs> which doesn't happen on Suns. Doesn't happen. And it came from the security guard who greeted us every day where we'd ride by him on the motorcycle and be like, that boy ain't right. I, I didn't even know. I, I, now you're talking about it, I'm putting it together. And that's definitely where it came from. He used to say that because we used to joke around. <laughs> every morning, every night. That was, that was his stick. That was his whole stick. Was that boy that was right? his whole thing. And that was all he said. And, and it made it in the show. Guys, made it in the show. I mean, that, that boy ain't right. <laughs> that was it, man. So, and, and you know, another thing was Juicy Boy only existed because of you. That was never written. No, no, but, it was, but that's the thing. I think a lot of what was said between the takes and while we were on set often, often made it onto the page through either the writer or the producer that happened to be on set that day would pick up, would hear us talking about this and that. Yeah. Because I saw you come alive in certain scenes because I know you've been involved in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Conversations we've had, you go, wait a fucking minute. I know we were talking about that. So how did it suddenly, you know, I happened all the time, which is fine. It's great. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what blew me away when I went right from that, you know, I did a couple movies in between. Then I went to Luke Cage and I got on, there were two things that happened. The showrunner who I knew, I'd, I'd, he, he had written the original script for this film, Lowriders, I did. He would call me up after I'd get the script and he'd be like, hey, you want to talk about it? What do you think about this scene and this and that? And I was like, what's going on here? Is this, is this what you do? Like we actually, we're talking about this and you, you, want to hear, you want to hear what I think? You know, and it was just a totally different thing. And then I remember, I'll never forget being in like the, uh, the I was in my dressing room. We we're on set. And somebody came to like the room and was like, hey, man, uh, they need you. And I was like, all right, hold on. All right. Just, I'm going to be there in a minute. And I was like, and one of Charles Murray, who I love him to death. Love was on, child. Yeah. Love you, Charles. Charles, Charles was on the show and he said something to me. He goes, hey, listen, it's not like sons here. Like, it's OK. Everybody's cool. And I was like, oh, because we were so tense all the time. I'm telling you, Theo, I still I still have to shake off that way of working. It's, it's still with me. In some ways, there's a professionalism to it that, that you have to be on your toes all the time. All the you time. can take that from it. But there was so much that I still, to this day, I'll take it to a show and I, th- I find myself going, what the fuck am I doing? This is not the same. <laughs> calm down. I mean, it's yeah. not, it's just calm down. Go do, just, just think about doing your job. Yeah. It's like a lot of politics, a lot of bullshit. No, it's and it's almost like it's 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 like a form of like PTSD that I had from the show, and I and like you said, I use it, and and I guess if people don't understand what we're talking about, it's not that it was a bad thing; it was just that we were shooting so fast. It was a format. It was a it was a production line. You had to be bump 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 bump. Yeah, they could call you up and be like, "Hey, come on, let's go. We're going to do these riding scenes right now," and you're like, "Oh, oh, we're doing those now." and you're going 70 miles an hour and you're, you're doing these riding scenes and the cameras are really close. And then they'd be like, all right, get into the van, run. You got to do your other scene now. They just moved it up. And you're like, what? What's going uh, I don't even know the lines yet. Oh, okay. All right. And you go and- Do I the lanes? Oh, I the lane. Yeah. Yeah. And you just, it was run and gun from the second you hit the ground. That's right, yeah. And I think that that was, what was weird about that is then you'd be in that mode. Your heart would be racing- but then certain other people go do a scene and you'd be sitting in the trailer for like three and a half hours. You'd be like, what's going on? Why am I sitting here? And they go, oh, that, that person's just taking their time. And you go, what the? Oh, are they? <laughs> oh, really? What about? <laughs> what about... But anyways, they... I, I thought that we, I, I, mean, I hope guest stars on our show agree, but I, I think we, we treated guest stars. I'm still friends with all of them. Yeah, yeah me, me too. I've got, I've got a few friends still. And uh because you knew what they were walking on to, you know what I mean? And yeah, well, I, I know I did. I know you did. And yeah. You knew they were walking on, walking into something. Because if you walk on that set, you're going to think, what the fuck are these guys all about? Because we kind of get into that mentality sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, we're laughing and joking, but when you're being these guys, sometimes it gets a bit much. Of, oh, anyway, I'm rambling on you. No, no, no. It was in what you said is right. It was like, and I'll never forget this, uh, you know, and I, I, I think I've told this story once. I don't know where it was. There was this guest star on this kid. It was late in the game. It was like season six. And the kid, the show was so iconic at that point that this kid came on and he was so excited. And I would always go up and knock on the door and be like, hey, man, how are you? You know, whatever. And I knew because I know I know being an outsider that this was a tough place to be. Tough and I was, room. yeah, tough room to, you know, it's there's jokes going on that you don't know about. And it and certain people wouldn't even, you know, were standoffish. And it was like me, you, Teague, we'd be like, hey, how are you? 
<laughs> you don't know how some people are. So I would say, I'd said to the kid, hey, how are you? He's like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so this. And I was like, great. And the kid was like really into it. And then it was one of those days where we went way late, like way late, many, many hours. We were on the set. And I saw the kid say something like, he was like, hey, man, like uh, is this everybody, you guys usually work this long? Like, when do you go home and this and that? And I pulled him over and I said, hey, listen to me. Listen here. I said, um, how long? I said, how long have you been wanting to act? And he's like, oh, my whole life and this and that. And I said, how long have you dreamed about being on a show like this that like 15 million people are going to watch and this and that? He's like, oh, man, it's a dream. And I said, so don't worry about it, because if you weren't here. You're just going to be sitting home or you're going to be at the Grove or you're going to be walking on Melrose or doing some dumb shit. I said, enjoy this moment. Like, you know, and I think I was saying it as much for him as I was for myself. I was like, enjoy the moment here because this is where you've always wanted to be. He was one of those dudes who was like in another club, like another son's uh, branch. So he was wearing like the cut and the whole bit. And he looked at me and he was like, you're right. And I remembered learning that from jimmy smith's and people like that who would literally just say hey listen these things don't come around all the time that's what jimmy said there was a big i remember there was a big uproar one time and jimmy was the tommy keep a cool head because uh believe it or not this is lightning in a bottle this only harms and now now things passed it was it was i mean it was it was like it was and uh Whatever your grievances may have been, whether justified or not, um, it is. And and again, and it's like we start. It's like we started this thing with. It's like I I would. We helped have- each other. We. I mean, I mean I'm sorry, jump in, but when I think it's going back to what we sort of spoke at the start. If we didn't have each other to push you, just come on that that little yeah. nudge you needed sometimes. And we if we didn't have that bond on this show, there's no way it would have lasted that long. I don't know a million oh. fucking years. They could have recast it. They could have done whatever. But that was just one of those pit storms, I thought, of the right people in the right place at the right time. And that's the success of that. I mean, and, I, I, and, and, right, everything, everything. and everything that happened from it. What's so crazy is there's so many things that we can't even, you know, that we couldn't even go into, but so many things that happened that like this person got killed off and then went on to this career and this person did this and, and this person, you know, asked for more money and, and they were off the show and, and, and like all died. these, <laughs> right. Yeah. They and died. then they died and like all this stuff that happened, it just started pushing it more and more. Like, I think if like, Certain things didn't happen with other people. Would my character ever be what it was? If, if you know, if Opie Absolutely. doesn't go, does yeah. Chibs do this and does that? So it's like all these things would occur and it would somehow, it was supposed to all happen. Yeah, because we all allowed each other to be navigated, but with each other. It wasn't the Eagles where, the, the Eagle wasn't that crazy that, oh no, this is the way I do my thing. And I said, uh-huh. you guys had to work around me. Everyone kind of flowed with each other because we had to, and that was the way it should have been. And that's what I loved about the show. I loved that everyone would give you that. Like, I love the uh, one of my funniest memories was you when I come in and try to say the consequently, the the consequently, the consequently, you just can't. You would you would get a line or two that your mouth just refused to say. Not. It's, <laughs> it's not the pronunciation is not there. And here here here's what's you know what one of my fondest memories is, and it sounds so minuscule, but because it was so funny now in hindsight, when we would sit around that big table, it would either be 130 degrees, we have all the clothes on right, and we're all sitting in there, and each person would have like one word or one line and would go around the table like a, like a board game right and then and then it would stop and then it was yeah and then it would stop on the one person who had the big monologue and you and I I always had a really hard time staying awake it sounds so crazy oh I'm it's so like, you a few things I'm so you know though I'm seeing that <laughs> and then you you fell asleep your head bounced off I just put a hoodie up I just put a hoodie up 
and the glasses. I the first couple of scenes, I sat drunk off my ass. I think put the hoodie up with the shades on. Oh like, Tommy, my! Tommy, you should put your hoodie down. The cameras, you see. I'm like, no, no, my character. <laughs> my character wouldn't be seen. My and character the, is he's hung over from the night before. <laughs> and it would. There was sometimes it would get to you, and I'd be like, he's supposed to say the line now, and yeah, I th- yeah. I'd be like, I think he's sleeping. <laughs> And we were all there and there was so much hijinks and chaos going on because we were rarely ever all in the same room. And then it would be, you know, all these different things going on and who had their problems and who had this. But I remember those because I remember laughing so hard at those moments because when they were good, they were great. We would just be laughing the whole time. And if they were tense, they would be super tense. And everybody, the second they call cut, everybody go walk away. Back then, I think, you know, we were still smoking cigarettes and we'd be outside and kind of yeah. just disappearing. But, but you know what? I, I say this and, I, and we, we started with this. I think what I take from all of it is I know I wouldn't have my life now. And the truth is I look at those kids, my, my two sons, and I'm just like the wealth of like Charlie said it once, like it was like going to college, right? Like for him, it was like going to college, like learning all this stuff. I think that it was it was like this master class in how you wanted to be and how you didn't want to be you know right. where you learn both of it right and i think that now like looking at my kids i feel like i developed through that show so much uh, as a person you know like we've said what we've both been through because not just did we do the show together you and i have been on hundreds of appearances together and yeah. we've traveled all over together and we've done all, all this world, kind of yeah. stuff all over the world and it's like how do you feel like now, like now as you're seen, because we talked about this before we got on the, on the show, the business has changed so much from when you and I got in, right? And you got in earlier than me, like five, six years earlier than me. It's changed so much and it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. There's more content than ever. There's more whatever, but the way, and, I, and this is the point I'm trying to make is as character actors, as people who try to adopt characters, we never really wanted people to know who we were as humans. Like we, we wanted to only be our characters. Don't you feel like it's changed so much how people are like branding themselves and becoming and the characters aren't as important as the person now? How does that feel for you now as an actor? The person being more important than the characters. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like when you go to meet with people now. I mean, the whole social media thing now is, is, is off the chain. It's, it's this whole that you're saying. It's like you're known for being that. I would rather to be known for, for my fucking work. I don't want yeah. to be known for, you know, putting a couple of funny pictures up on Instagram or whatever bullshit. Because, I mean, really, I mean, I, I, I don't want to talk about social media right now, to no. be honest with you, because it, no. cause it, it, there's no point. It. I love there's no hate. point. You know yeah, what I mean? Too. There's a, so many great people, and then there's a lot of poison on there. And it just, yeah. I just, I, 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 yeah, fuck it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a changing thing for sure. And uh, when God knows what it's going to be like on the other side of this, I mean, I can't imagine yeah. what it's going to be like the other side of this. I really don't. I mean, what the hell? I don't know. I know, I know, I know. And, and we talk about this a lot, right? Because I, I think that, you know, in, in as, we, as we move towards Earth 2.0, which we call, I, I do feel that there's a couple of things I've been saying recently, like we're hopefully navigating towards the age of authenticity, like, you know, where, where who you are, truly, like who you are. The, what, the greatest thing about you, about Tommy Flanagan, is you've always been you. Good, bad, right, wrong, indifferent. You are you. Right. You've never oh, tried. Yeah. yeah. You've never tried to please anybody. You don't try to like you've always been the sweetest. You 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 always are the best when they call action. But you've always been you. And that's greatness. Right. Like that alone. What I have seen in this business is people who are constantly trying to find themselves. So they're always changing themselves. Like you meet them and it's like one day they're talking about they're on some macrobiotic diet and that's all they talk about. And one day they're collecting like ancient coins and one day they're, you know, they're, they're, they're in some soul cycle. It's like, it's always changing because they're constantly trying to find something to define them. And I think you and I have been defined at a young age. So it's like, now we're just kind of just doing our thing like we're living our life you just you can't help but be you i mean if you're taking on all these other things i don't have to, i don't have the space in my <laughs> in my mindset for all those other shenanigans it's like 
you know, is what you, I, I like to, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I'm a loving person. Always. Got, got a temper, yeah. Well, I'll get fucking tempers. But, you know, I, I speak to people the way I expect to be speak, spoken to. And, you know, I think that's... I've never, I've never not seen you be amazing with anyone. I mean, like literally young actors, every single person you've been around. And it's funny because you and I have been surrounded by a lot of fucking douchebags, like a lot of people, a lot of douchebags, are, a lot of douchebags and yeah. people who are just genuinely bad people. Like, uh, let's be honest, like we've, you, who have bad energy, narcissistic yeah. egos, you know, whatever. And I would watch you and I was like, man, this dude, right? Like, it, and again, what I loved about it was that yin and the yang, right? Like it's just fucking bringing it every time they call and set, like bringing it on action, doing something different every time, doing whatever, but being so nice. And you were one of those people that what I've taken and Jimmy Smith was another one. And then my friend Alfrey Wooded, where you knew every single person's name on set. You knew every yeah, sure. from yeah. grips to the parking to the crew to the you knew everyone's name and you didn't just know their name. You knew about them. You'd ask about their kids, about their life. And I was like, this motherfucker can't remember his <laughs> own name. He can't remember his own name. And he remembers everyone's name. But that, that's it's the same with that. It's like, you know, I, OK, it's about naff saying this, but it's like 25 years in the hood and 25 years in Hollywood. That's basically what my life is split into. I had 25 years growing up where I grew up, and the last 25 years of my life has been doing this. And that 25 years ago doesn't seem 25 years ago. It seems like something that just happened. Like we were saying earlier, it's like, was it a minute? Was it an hour ago? Was it, yeah. it's just, it, you know, it's, it's always coming in at my life. And um, you, you just don't shake that kind of history and try make it work in my career um, um, I don't know. They just they just overlap so much, and I I don't know what I'm trying to say here, boy. No, what what you're trying to say is no. One of the things that I've always thought, and I've been using this term a little here and there, is like blue collar actors, like people who have that they can take their previous life of just yeah, that. Just, I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's not, I'm not doing that working class hero bullshit. I'm not doing that at all. I don't mean that in any way, shape, or form. It's just. It's just knowing what was there and what, 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 what has been and what could be. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's those two things that, I, that, 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 that amaze me. That, that now, like, we're talking about having kids and being married and being happy. And it's just such the world is so removed from that. Yeah. And it just so happens that I get to be an actor as well. It's yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of cool, yeah. It is, but it, it's cool as fuck. And so uh, I don't see where I, I would I, I would ever have the right to treat any other human being as if they're less than me. Because right. I mean, I've been lower than a snake's balls with a fucking top hat on. I mean, I've <laughs> crawled under there. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, so I, 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 everyone should be treated with civility and humanity, and we should just fucking spread the love. And 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 it's and it's funny because the ones who I see who don't do that. And now, now, 20 years into this, now I go at those people where I used to kind of because I didn't usually sometimes those were the biggest stars and I'd be like, oh, I don't want to risk my own job. Now I'm like, I'll go oh, right I'll at go. them. Yeah, yeah, I go right at them. Right in there, son. Right in the jugular. Yeah, right in the jugular. And, and the thing is, is what I've always noticed is those people who do that, there's two reasons they're doing it in this business. It's fear that they're not nearly as good as people well, that's, think they that's are. That's the business. The, the fear, the, the, the insecurities in this business is, is, is fucking mind boggling. Mind boggling. That's number one. And then number two was that they were trying to make up a false life that they didn't have. And they thought that people were going to find out about it. Like trying, yeah. trying to be tough, like trying to do this and trying to do that. And it's like, you're trying so hard and I see you. We all see that this is false. Like, what are you doing? And and it's really interesting because back when I was younger, I would, you know, again, as someone who started as an extra and then had one line and one word, you know, my, my route was different. Yours was Braveheart and in. Mine was like extra in some Nickelodeon show, 26 playing 15. You know what I mean? And... and, and <laughs> <laughs> and, and I and I came in and I was like, I'm going to I, find that show. Oh, I'll, I'll I'll show you. I'm about to post a picture of, of of an Olsen an Olsen twin movie I did where I was 26 playing 16. And I remember coming Hollywood. in. Hollywood. 
and and people would like they'd have i just was told and it's the term i hate more than anything in this life is when people go hey man it's just the way it is and i would go that's not the way it is if that was if that's the way it is in real life you'd get slapped in the face like you can't but slapped you, up yeah you can't street. talk like that you, know, you can't, you can't treat people like that you just can't but again it was basically reported like, oh, but if you go after that person, if you tell that guy that he's being, then you're going to, then you're going to get fired. And I was like, this is the way this fucking business is. You got and black then, last year and this now, yeah. Yeah. And then slowly but surely I said, fuck it. I'm not going to allow this. I was like, I'm not letting this happen. And I didn't care if I jeopardized my entire career for it. I mean, look, I mean, look at this whole Harvey yeah. Weinstein piece of shit. I mean, the girls that lived under that tyranny and that fear, the women yeah. that lived under that piece of shit for all those times. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's some. Yeah, I was I was too low on the totem pole. I never met that dude. I never heard. The only thing I did was hear fucking awful things about him. And I remember thinking at the time, why is everybody saying this guy's so fucking awful and nobody's doing anything? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, I, I mean, I can't say I knew much about it, apart from the name Weinstein. And, yeah, but I mean, any, I mean, there was so many fuckers in that Hollywood that I met over over the decades. Oh. God. You just think, how, how the fuck is this horror show allowed to walk around? And and also, if we weren't, and if we weren't in the contained space of this business, I would fucking be choking the life out of you. Oh, you, you can't. Like, Stop fucking you can't, dead. You can't talk like that. To me. You get in the quiet room. You would you, you would come out exhausted because you <laughs> you would go. I would get busy. Yeah. And the thing is, is that. It was one of those things, and especially I came in and like, you know, I got to Hollywood October 31st, 1999. So it was like one of those things where, again, what people would tell me, like when I was an extra and they would treat you like fucking dog shit. And then when I was a co-star and they treat you like shit, people go, hey, man, it's just the way it is. And I was like, it's the way it is. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be like this. Exactly right. It doesn't have. That's why we're the way we are with people around us, because you've seen what it's the shit rolling down. And it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. But this is such an insecure job. I've seen actors, to, to them, lesser actors, like shit. And it makes yeah. me fucking my blood boil. I mean, I, I could name a name right now that I, I nearly knocked him out on set on a movie. Yeah. Way too, oh, my God. I was dead fucking close. But um, anyway, and, 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 and you know what's funny? And you know what's funny? So here's here's what's interesting about the show, Theory, the one we're doing right now. When I first, you know, when this first came up, it was before we were all in, you know, lockdown and shelter in place, before there was a global pandemic. I, you know, was sitting here and we would, the, the whole point of the episodes where we were going to speak about specific theories, right? So let's say you and I wanted to talk about fatherhood, right? And we would do an episode on that, right? But this is, again, before the world changed. And all they wanted me to do, talk to actors, like get actors on, get actors on. And I would sit there and say, I, I have to tell you something. Actors are not that fucking interesting. No. Like, they're, 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 they're not. They're fucking, they're very few actor friends. Sorry. They're, I do. They're, very few. They're, 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 I go, they're not interesting. They're kind of fucking egomaniacs. And they don't really, they, they don't, and they have canned answers. They're not going to talk the truth. And, and they're worried about how they look. And, and the truth is, they haven't really lived a life. There's very few. So I said, I'm going to have a hard time fucking putting them on the show because I'm not going to relate to them. And they're like, but you are an actor. I said, I know. I know it sounds counter like into but I'm I'm not really an actor. <laughs> if you want to do a show, I mean, you want you want like me and you sitting here having a chat. I'm enjoying this and hopefully the listeners are enjoying it. two guys telling the God's honest. Okay, we're not mentioning a few fucking names, but uh, yeah, you know, we're just some, doing that some money in the mail, and you yeah. never know, you can fucking find out exactly <laughs> what's on about. But uh, but you know, that's that. Uh, you got to have. Uh, what's the point of doing these things unless you're going to get uh, like a, a nice fucking interaction? Mm -hmm. Like you, I love you to death. You've never been fucking death, boring. Too. I've never known you to be boring, even when you're a prick. You're, I, I still love you. I've seen you walking about being a prick. I think I love that fuck. I can't help myself. <laughs> Hey, listen, I've had I've had to carry you into a car a few times, so I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I can't even fight that one. I get nothing on that one. You got me there. The best line, the best line you ever said in this one. Best lines, you and I. It's easy to remember whatever best lines I said. Only had it before. Best line ever. Best line ever said. We were, you ever said. We we're on a plane. They blocked off the front, uh, the bathrooms because the pilots were coming out to go to the bathroom, and you and I are on the plane, and uh, and you go to get up, and I said you can't get up. They have the thing there. You can't go to the bathroom because that's where 
the, the pilots are going right now. And you go, it's okay. And I go, no, it's okay. And, 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 you, and you pulled out a cigarette and I go, don't, no, you can't go in there. And you go, um, you go, no, it's okay. I'm in first class. And I go, no, that's not the way it works. And I had to tackle you down and not cause a ruckus. And I said, this, you, <laughs> I, and this is what I've loved about you my whole life is you truly have, you march to your own drummer. And at the same time, it was always so rational. <laughs> Every, like, and, and it was that same day we arrived somewhere. It was like three in the morning. We arrived somewhere. And uh, I think the Starbucks was just opening or four in the morning or something. And you said, uh, give, me, give me money. And I said, okay, what do you, what do you need? You said, just give me, give, me, give me $20. So you go up, you get your, your usual, which I still remember what it is, the quad macchiato, right? You go quad up, macchiato, yeah. <laughs> you, go, you go up and you get it. And you give the whole 20, you give him everything. I think it was like $3 and you gave him $17 too. <laughs> and I said, uh, what's, uh, where's the money? And you go, oh, sh- uh, I gave it to her. And I said, oh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm not getting that back. And no, <laughs> but that in itself was exactly. How many times did I do that to you? But you'd have to understand, I loved it. I loved it so much because it shows exactly you are the ultimate living in the moment. We talked a little before about samadhi. Samadhi is like finding that inner moment, living in that moment of all times, not in the past, not in the present. And you were always so amazing about that. And that's why, to me, this was so important, not just to catch up during all this and, and, you know, and check on the family and see how you're doing and tell you that you have motivated me to buy uh to hopefully, hopefully, we'll see what happens after all this. Uh, I would love my kids to be raised around horses and donkeys. And I know I see Ingenue and the pictures on them and it's, it just sounds amazing. But you have motivated me in more ways than you can know just on who you are and how you live your life. And I appreciate you. You know well, that I appreciate so much. you, young brother. I really do. You know, I've got nothing but mad love for you. And uh, I appreciate what you said there. Back out, you kid. You know, like we had... Uh, we took a quite a journey together and the journey's not over no. and I'm so happy you're in my life. Me and, too. Uh, I can't wait to spend more time with you and uh, anything you want to share. Are we wrapping up here? We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. It. My boy, I f- honestly, I fucking adore you. What if I said we weren't wrapping up? Wait a second. Were you not going to say you love me? <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I feel you. I'm right here too. So. Are you going to vape? What are you doing with vape shit? I no, just... no, 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 I'm not vaping. That's a CBD pen. You didn't want to want No, no THC. Oh, fuck. It's a point of that. <laughs> it's a point of that. All right, my boy. I love you to death. Best of luck with too. the show. And yeah. listen, I'm, this is going, I'm going to let the other fucking act on the planet. There'll be a podcast coming from me very soon. I'm ready. Let's go. I, 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 I Listen. Chibs and chibs and juice is forever. It's eternal. It's so eternal, uh, it's I eternal you, forever. I love you too. And please give Anjanu D my love and uh, tell that donkey I say hello. Uh, give the little kings and your beautiful wife all my I love. Will. I love you, brother. Love You're you the best. Take right. care, son. Well, there it is. Uh, 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 juice and chibs ride again. Um, I, I could talk to him for hours and hours and hours um, about so much more stuff. I think we talked for an hour before we even started recording. Um, he's, uh, he, there's nothing like him. And, uh, and I could watch him read a phone book and I would, I would watch a three hour movie of that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're really excited about the show. I hope you guys are feeling the same way. We're just kind of jumping on everywhere into all these different varied interests that I have and all these different people. And, um, and we're going to keep doing them. If uh, you'll keep listening to them. So go to, uh, you know, you can find the show Spotify and Apple and uh, uh, Podcast One and Google Podcasts and everywhere else they have them. Go rate, review, subscribe. The hashtag is TheoryPod, capital T-H-E-O, small R-Y, pod, capital P-O-D. I probably lost you on the T. But uh, yeah, TheoryPod's the hashtag. Um Go, go subscribe, listen to these things, uh, go back and listen to the ones you haven't. And, um, and we're going to, we're going to keep doing it because, uh, because we like it and we really hope you do too. Uh, Tommy Flanagan, man, Tommy Flanagan, Tommy fucking Flanagan. I love him.
This is a time to dream of the times to come when you're finally free to enjoy. The good times are coming and your lake or pond will be waiting, clean and crystal clear, ready for summer fun for you and your family. Drop Aquaside pellets in your water and in weeks you can participate, swim and boat in comfort with joy and with freedom. Call 800-328-9350 or learn more at Aquaside.com. State permit may be required. Visit Aquaside.com. Amazon is hiring near you. Earn a competitive wage and start as soon as seven days. No resume or experience required. Health and safety are a top priority with all of our roles and sites. And Amazon is taking precautions in our buildings to keep people healthy. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer.